Hi, I'm Riley Del Rey. I'm the creator, executive producer, and director of Capital Barbie. Politics are never pretty. Capital Barbie is my life story. And what I enjoyed most about this creative process was not only telling my story my way, but collaborating with all of these actors and crew members that helped bring their own special ideas to Capital Barbie. Dolly Politely is a University of New Mexico graduate. As a Latino Leader Fellow, she will spend the next year working alongside Latino Caucus Chairwoman and Congresswoman Melissa Lopez Gaffney. The title comes from a nickname that I was given when I worked on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. They called me Capital Barbie because of my perceived glamour and femininity. But the skills that took me to Capitol Hill in the first place were my intelligence, my determination, my tenacity, and my ability to be strategic. Our story is set in Washington, D.C. in 2015, and it's an honest and striking look through the eyes of a trans woman. Dolly Golightly is our hero of the story. She learned a lot about politics through a television screen. To Dolly, politicians are celebrities. Thank you. Capital Barbie is a story yet to be told, which is really saying something. Hollywood remakes, reboots, sequels, and prequels, literally everything. So the voice you're hearing is a unique one. Capital Barbie is an honest, striking look into the triumph of one woman whose story must not go untold. I wrote what I knew and really was influenced from my life working as an intern in Washington, D.C. But my co-writer also had a lot of really great script ideas for the characters. When she first brought the script to me, it was a very empowering project um, from what I initially read. And I thought it was really important to, you know, really capture her story, um, but in a, in a very, like, Hollywood way, like, um, less documentary style and more like a film, like you're watching something to escape reality. Why'd you get fired anyway? Everyone knows the hot ones don't last on the hill. What is that supposed to mean? That means that you girls have nothing to worry about. I thought it was really important to highlight um, some of the more toxic behaviors and um, the way people, you know, con conversate, especially in like political arenas. You look white. Your last name is Golightly. Are you even Mexican? My mom's Mexican and my dad's Irish. His last name's Golightly. I'm New Mexican. And really a throwback to films that we loved growing up, like Mean Girls. So if you're from Africa, why are you white? Oh my God, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. Jawbreaker was a big inspiration for me and co-producer Violet Martinez. You see that iconic scene where the clackers are walking down the hallway. Capital Barbie is an exaggeration of real life, but it's also very relatable because it's inspired by real life. An all New Mexican cast and crew finally got to watch the fruit of their labor. They've been working through the pandemic on a TV series pilot shot entirely in the Duke City. Capital Barbie really looked to keep all the casting from here, local Albuquerque and surrounding area New Mexico people. They really gave an opportunity to the locals here to really dig in and try something with a little more grid and a little more lines and uh, some power, power stuff. So I'm excited to be a part of it and I'm thankful for the opportunity from Riley. While I was writing the script, I already knew who I wanted cast in these characters. Us being able to represent New Mexico and the, how the film industry is starting to boom here, it's just awesome to be a part of it. I knew Ivan Hernandez from The Graceful Path, and he was a dream casting. Come on, dog. Can't wear your shoes in my bed. Me, man. You know? I think you're the only girl here that's this first lady material. Oh, really? Elise brought this brightness and naivety to Dolly, which I really enjoy. Dressing the way, way that I dress. dress. Elise is also a native New Mexican like me, so it was just something I wanted for the project. The role of Dolly was originally written for Elise's twin sister. Oh, Congresswoman. Oh, I brought you something from the district. But Elise tagged along to the audition and she ended up snagging the part. Okay, dressing. 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 The way that I dress. 
And what I wear is no one else's nothing to display my else's business, business, but my own. And you don't I mean, you don't have to look at me every day if you don't want to. It's not like I'm telling you what you can and can't wear. I'm doing fine. And my dressing is hot. I'm doing so fine. I'm going to wear what I wear. And you don't have to wear what I wear. I wear what I wear. You don't have to wear what I'm wearing. It's nice meeting you. I think I'm going to call you tall. And I'm going to call you short. You better not. Jeanette and Elise had tremendous chemistry. They knew each other from acting class. I knew both of them. And it was just really a pleasure getting to rehearse some of these scenes and getting to know the actresses. They really delivered nuanced performances and really helped these characters achieve a new level of likability and also another dimension because how can you be a character that has two faces and these two actresses nailed it. And, and I, I will work, work every, every day, day of this, this campaign, campaign to earn your to trust, your, trust your, support, your support, and your vote. And your vote. Thank you. Thank you. I can't stand those fucking interns. I found really parts of myself. <laughs> Maybe I kind of hide, but you know, and I was able to tap into. I saw Jeanette's audition in an acting class on Instagram, and from that, I called her in for an audition, and I knew she had what it took to play an egoistic congresswoman vying to become the nation's first Latina president. I think Melissa was um, maybe a part that I don't usually get. Hours ago. That was great. Okay. I really, uh, this is horrible, but, um, and actually, I, I actually think this part didn't even make it into the film. <laughs> there is a scene where, uh, I don't want to say too much, but I'm not being very nice to um, Elise's character. And um, I'm just being so terrible to <laughs> her. And I had so much fun. I mean, it's horrible to say, but that was really fun because it was just this, it was fun. And I felt like all of us were really in the moment and it just felt like real. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I felt bad a little bit afterwards because we were just, we were just so real. You look like some trash in a truck stop bathroom. Barely passing for a drag queen, much less money. Also, you know, when you think about it and you realize that, you know, I don't know if the wording was the same, but this happened. And I think about how badly I felt for the character, you know, and it's not just a character, it's a real person. And this actually happened. So, um, yeah, you know, there's that aspect of it too. Well, it was really fun to be that way and play that when you look at it and realize that that's, that's really what happened. It's, it's not good. I'll lose my scholarship. I will lose everything. <laughs> 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 Do you really think that I care about any of that? Do you know what they would say about this office if they find out that you're a man? I am not dealing with a political fallout of having a tranny traipsing around, traumatizing straight men lurking in our bathrooms with a twig and two berries. I've been with this project since the beginning, I feel, so it's, it's kind of special to me just because it is another queer story which we don't have as many as I feel people think. It was really fun picking out like the wardrobe pieces for Dolly and Melissa Lopez Gaffney. Um, just having those two play off of each other. And the actresses were really great at having that like sort of power dynamic within the roles, which is really what we wanted to bring to this film. I think a lot of it um, goes into, you know, expressing yourself and a lot of the characters that we have Dolly meet, you know, Dolly's already trying to express herself in the way that works for her, whereas these characters, they kind of are trying to fit into what kind of society has told them. Each of these looks does represent where these characters are from. You know, Dolly, our playful and very sweet and innocent girl from like kind of down the block, essentially, who kind of just got her dream job and she's very excited and she's kind of showing how happy she is through her clothes at first and it sadly takes a worse turn due to 
very conservative people. And you know, these characters who really had to kind of build themselves and like mold themselves into fitting on Capitol Hill so they can survive themselves. Whereas Dolly, you know, she doesn't feel the need to conform. You know, Dolly, we're really trying to preserve her image as a young woman. So we're dressing her in like Dior and um, very nice tight cut suits with, um, you know, nice little heels and very clean refined makeup. Whereas with uh, Melissa Lopez Gaffney, she has, you know, sequins and tight fitting revealing clothing. She wears these really like obnoxious red boots with, you know, that are bedazzled and kind of still the show in the essence. You Melissa know, very, represents the generation that, a very conservative generation that she grew up in to where she is kind of forced to act the way that she does. And I want her clothing to kind of show that she is a very conservative, very like stuffy woman. The costume really does help you get into character. Right? Now get off the hill. I just love how it's so backwards. Like you can't dress like this, but I can dress like this. We just wanted to capture that like two-sided personality that I feel a lot of politicians have. Um, while doing, you know, their campaign work. They say one thing and then they deliver another. And that's just a generalization of, you know, Capitol Hill. But I think in film, it's really important to capture that because again, the, this story is based on true events. The incoming generation of Latino leaders beat out over 1,000 applicants this year for all expenses paid to work on the Hill. I wanted the girls to really have fun and just be glamorous and kind of step out of like reality and every day and like, you know, that's the point of a film is like you're entering a whole other world. So I really wanted to capture that with the clothing, the dialogue, the makeup. <laughs> This particular project took over a year through a whole pandemic. You know, the priority was keeping the cast and crew safe. So we halted production in 2020 and then start kicked off strong and finished strong in 2021. It affected everybody. So I'm glad we were able to be resilient and finish the project, you know. To see it get picked up and the whole cast and crew get back on board was really nice to see. It being from script to screen, that just was like a weight off my shoulder. It felt like I could focus on another project. I know, I just finished this one, but I'm ready for the next one. And my philosophy is that New Mexico, we produce such great talent and stories, and that's really what this is all about, is showcasing that and being New Mexico true.